Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to read, interpret, and understand box and whisker plots. So basically, what are we looking at when it comes to box and whisker plots? Now keep in mind, box and whisker plots are also called box plots. So in this video, we're going to cover the basics. Now at first, box and whisker plots may look complex and not make any sense, but it's just a matter of understanding what you're looking at and what box and whisker plots represent. Now simply put, box and whisker plots are a way to display data and the spread of that data. They give us a visual. Let's jump into our example and see exactly how to read and interpret a box and whisker plot. For our example, we're going to be taking a look at years of teaching experience. So 10 teachers were surveyed, and here are the results. Again, this is years of teaching experience. This data is in order from least to greatest, and the box and whisker plot has been created below. Now, when it comes to box and whisker plots, there are five key parts. They show us a five number summary of the data set. Box and whisker plots display the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. Let's start by taking a look at the minimum and the maximum. So the minimum number of years of teaching experience is three. The maximum, is 18. So the minimum is three years and the maximum is 18 years. So the minimum and maximum are just the smallest and largest numbers in value within the data set. So as far as the box and whisker plot, we have the minimum right here and the maximum right here. So let's label this minimum and maximum. So the whiskers that extend out from the rectangle extend to the minimum and to the maximum. Now that we covered the minimum and maximum, we're actually going to move to the middle and we're going to take a look at this line right here inside the rectangle. That line represents the median. The median is the middle point of the data the halfway point or the 50th percentile. The median is also referred to as the second quartile. Now, since we have 10 numbers within the data set, the halfway point is going to be in between the eight and the 10. So this is the median. It splits the data set in half. We have five numbers to the left and five numbers to the right. Now we are directly in between eight and 10. So we take the average of those two numbers to find the median. So we do eight plus 10 and then divide by two. Eight plus 10 is 18 divided by two is nine. So the median is nine. Now for this one, we can just think that nine is directly in between eight and 10. But keep in mind, whenever you have two numbers and you need to find the median in between, you can take the average in order to do so. So again, the line inside the rectangle is the median. So that's the halfway point within our data. Now we need to take a look at the first quartile, also known as the lower quartile, and then the third quartile, also known as the upper quartile. Let's take a look at the first quartile first. So we need to take a look at the bottom half of our data, so right here. Now the first quartile is going to be the median or halfway point within our bottom half of the data. So we have five numbers within that bottom half. So this is going to be the median of the bottom half of the data. That means that's going to be the first quartile. That's the one fourth mark within our data. So the 25% mark or 25th percentile. So the first quartile is seven. That's represented by this part of the rectangle. So this is the first quartile or lower quartile. Again, it's seven. Now we need to find the third quartile, so the upper quartile. Let's take a look at 
the upper half of our data. We need to find the median, so the midpoint of that upper half. That's going to be right here. So 12. 12 is our upper quartile, the third quartile. That's the three-fourths mark within our data, so the 75% mark, or 75th percentile. So the third quartile is 12, and that is going to be this part of the rectangle. So third quartile. Those are the five parts of a box and whisker plot. We have the minimum, which was three years of teaching experience. So minimum was right here. Then we have the first quartile, which was seven. So right here. Then we have the median, which was nine. So right here. Then we have the third quartile, which was 12. So right here, and then we have the maximum, which was 18 years of teaching experience, which was right here. Box and whisker plots use quartiles, so the data is split into four parts. So fourths, we have about 25% of the data right here. We have about 25% of the data right here. We have about 25% of the data right here, and then we have about 25% of the data right here. Now the box within the box and whisker plot represents the interquartile range, so the middle 50% of the data. And then a whisker extends to the minimum, that's going to be the bottom 25% of the data, and then the other whisker extends to the maximum, that's going to be the upper 25% of the data. Now for one final recap, I'm going to erase all of that writing on the box and whisker plot. That way it's a little more clear as to what we're looking at. Now without all of that writing, we can focus more on the box and whisker plot. So one final recap here. We have the minimum, which is 3, represented right here. Then we have the first quartile, which is represented right here, and that is 7. Then we have the median, which is represented right here and is nine. Then the third quartile is represented right here and that is 12. And then lastly, we have the maximum, which is 18 and represented right here. So there you have it. There is an overview of how to read, interpret, and basically understand what you're looking at when it comes to box and whisker plots. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.